satisfaction. I hope that during your stay, you will be able to create and establish long-term collaborations between you and with other researchers here in the UPC. And of course, if you are interested in other fields than, than computer science, you can contact us. And obviously, I hope you enjoy your stay here in Barcelona. This is not the best weather this week, but I think it's an amazing city, so you can enjoy the city and have a, a nice stay. Now I'm going to, to allow Josep Fernandez, that's the Dean of the Faculty of Informatica de Barcelona, to say some words. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. A few words to wish you a happy stay in Barcelona and ask you to continue being yourself. Courageous women, diamonds, because we need you. We need, we need you to build a new knowledge society as diverse as, as, diverse and rich as possible. I hope this conference will provide you with new tools and ideas to empower your career and to have a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Josep. Now, Elena Torres is going to talk to you. Thank Sorry, you. Elena Torres <laughs> is member of the Chamber of Commerce, Women and Business and Economy Observatory here in Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you to the Women and Courage Organization for inviting me. I'm here representing Women, Business and Economy Observatory from the Chamber of Commerce. We are a group that we are working to uplift women and to increase female representation on companies, both on boards and management, but also on public organizations. Myself, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a company, an app, BWOM, to change the approach towards women health. We are a digital health startup. And before, in a cloud computing company. I'm also a small, small, small investor, in a, a small tech investor. I started in the startup tech scene 10 years ago. And I can tell you that before, sometimes I was the only woman. The good news is that each time we are more women. I'm very talented and more visible. Now it's the time for a woman to shine. I really can tell you. Um, it has been proven that diversity brings bigger earnings to companies and bigger returns to investors. However, we are still underrepresented. So it's your generation who can make a change. Don't step back. Make a step ahead and follow your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot go where you want to. Hard work and perseverance will help you arrive wherever you want to. As Maya Angelou said, if you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. There are no obstacles. Nowadays, technology can help you work anywhere, anytime. So that's helping both men and women to have the life we want. I'm not saying it's easy, but we can have it all. It's up to you to make it happen or give it up. Overall, um, do what you are passionate about. If you really wake up with passion every day, you will achieve anything you propose to. But you have to be aware that technology is driving the world. Absolutely all the sectors are being affected by technology. Even the most traditional ones, as real estate, if women we are not represented on technology, we won't be represented in the future. In the future. So if you want to have a, a world you like to live in, you have to be where decisions are taken. And you have to say your word. Other, or otherwise, others will, take, will make the world as they want without you. The future is tech. The future is female. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Mireia Mata is the General Director of Equality at the Government of Catalonia. Good morning, and uh, thank you for inviting us, and thank you for, for being here. Uh, you know, uh, we think that future uh, is, is ours, and future is yours. When we talk about uh, empower women, we are not just talking about show women doing something in a newspaper or in the TV. We are talking about power. Empowerment is get power. And the power in the future is tech. So we need that you, 
women uh, get this power. The power now is on politics, but is on technology, is on society. So we need that you get these powers. Future speaks tech language, just tech language. Don't speak this language today. It means just don't be uh, present in nowadays, uh, in the next, very next future. So we need you as young women uh, representing not just women, but just uh, justice, social uh, uh, sensibility, uh, social uh, um, imagination, and so we need that the future don't speak just a male language, but a female, a gender equality uh, language on technologies, because technologies is just all in this future. You, I suppose you know that we Catalans, uh, we are trying to, to get a, a new and best country, but uh, overall we wish to have a new and best, very best world. And this new and very best world, it will be just possible with women participation, with women and men equality. So thank you for just be working about that. Thank you, Mireia. Now, Nuria Castell, that's the co-chair of the Women Courage 27. Thanks. Uh, good morning. Uh, you are here probably for at least uh, one day or two days, so it's not a, an opening ceremony as, as usual because it's the moment that at least we are all together. And for me, it has been really a, a pleasure and, of course, a, <laughs> a huge job to organize this. But uh, I would like to to thank also the rest of the committee, especially Rayan and, and the rest of members that are uh, organizing. So you can, uh, I, I don't, will go through the list, but there is a lot of people behind the, this organization, uh, from ACM, from local uh, supporters, administration, and, and I would like to, to give a special thanks to the local volunteers that I'm having here from seven in the morning to nine o'clock. <laughs> and, and, and they are really very helpful. I, I really am um, very happy with the, with the final result of the, of the conference. Uh, we get more than 200 participants from more than 30 countries. And uh, one thing that is for me more impressive is that uh, more than 60% of these participants are less under 30. So this is really a lot of younger participants and I think uh, is uh, the goal of this conference, just to put together and, and all the young people, in, uh, all the young women in the in, in computing area and uh, create a very nice and international networks to help everybody and, and to go for this uh, uh, future with this technical world, as, as Mireia said, that uh, if uh, the world is technical, uh, so if you are tech, uh, it's fine. If not, it's difficult uh, to, to get uh, probably a job or whatever. And, and anyway, I think it's important, uh, very important, the participation of the women in the future so for the society. So uh, the collaboration between men and women is really, really necessary to have a a quality and good society. So just uh, uh, say that I'm, I'm happy with the, with the event and I hope that all of you enjoy the city and know something about uh, the UPC, the university that uh, you are spending some days here. And uh, uh, I hope you create really uh, very nice uh, connections these, uh, these days that will be uh, used in the, in the future and of course you know now where we are, so we are here for anything you you need. And just uh, just tell you that uh, yesterday we were, were in a lot of uh, local newspapers and Catalan and Spanish newspapers because uh, uh, this kind of concentration of uh, tech women is not really very <laughs> frequent. <laughs> so it was a, a news that uh, it was also mentioned in, in the local newspaper. So. Well, uh, I, I just uh, say thanks to everybody for uh, coming here and, of course, for uh, all, the, all the support that we have received. Thanks.
Thank you, Nuria. Now, Ray and Afer is another co-chair of this event. Good morning. You know, dreams come true. May I ask the audience who are sitting in the back to come, please? So let's be together. <laughs> we are more powerful when we are together. So um, I am so happy and so proud to be here this morning in Barcelona, in beautiful Barcelona, early in the morning, to have brought so many young men and women, but where are the men? I don't see them today. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so um, that was a dream, and dreams come true when you find the correct organizations, correct volunteers, and correct participants. So um, when we established ACMW Europe uh, in 2012, we didn't know what to do. There were issues. Uh, women were not selecting computer science as their area, so percentages were very low. And those who were in the area was getting frustrated, feeling alone, isolated, and leaving uh, the field. And those in the workplace had many challenges. So we decided to focus to young women who are already in the field, because we do not want them to drop out. Because young women um, have the passion to do social good, to see the results quickly, and uh, use their creativity uh, and everything, and having a very low percentage in this very important field, which is affecting every moment of, of our lives, was a shame. So we decided to focus, and now we can see that young women are brought together uh, with what ACM has provided us. You know, ACM being the premier organization of our field, the oldest, the widest, the most effective one, uh, working with volunteers and having more than uh, 1,000 members all around the world and more than half of the members being outside USA is a global organization who is supporting uh, everything everyone with a passion in their hearts to realize uh, this. So under ACM's umbrella, um, we, ha as we had our first Women Courage in Manchester in 2014. And ACM Europe Council is also new. And two days ago, uh, the ACM Europe Council elected uh, its new chair and Chris, is the new chair of ACM Europe Council, and Natasha is the new chair of ACMW Europe. Uh, so uh, we are proud to have them uh, here with us. Uh, so may I see the students who had a scholarship? Can you raise your hand? Congratulations. May I see professors who are with us? Yes. Thank you for being here. May I see industry people? Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Um, so, um, technology changing, um, making an impact. Is possible. I my own my first advice to young women is please never underestimate yourselves. So um, and dream, they will come true. I am very thankful to the university, Nuria, and may I see my friends who made it possible to organize this conference. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Thank you very much. 
it's a teamwork. It's the work of a huge team. And I'm very thankful to everyone, especially the attendees, because without attendees, we would not be able to do uh, this. Thank you very much. I wish you a very nice day, uh, and we will see you around. Thank you, Ryan. Now, Jordi Puchnero, that's the Secretary of Telecommunications, Cybersecurity, and the Digi Digital Society at the Government of Catalonia. Well, thank you very much. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Um, let me start um, remembering a sentence from a famous writer. Um, he said that uh, things happen now, and we understand, understand them uh, much later. Today, uh, we, we understand how important uh, were technologies like uh, the steam engine or electricity for the industrial revolution. And, uh, and that makes me think, um, and, and, we, and we understood them later how important was the Industrial Revolution for our society and how it changed the world. We are now living in another revolution, uh, which is the digital revolution, which means this revolution will change uh, in the future, but has started already, uh, will change the way we live, will change our economies, uh, will change everything. And uh, it is very important that uh, women participate on this, uh, in this revolution, in these changes, because uh, we cannot do without 50% of the talent of our population. And uh, this is why it is very important that uh, women like you, young uh, girls uh, like you, have decided to uh, be part of a career which uh, will probably change uh, the world in the, near, in the near future. It's not that I'm saying that, uh, but uh, that's already happening. Eh? Uh, we, we are seeing uh, nowadays how uh, the digital economy uh, is boosting our economies. We are seeing, uh, uh, for example, in, in the actual labor market, uh, we're seeing where this type of occupations, type of careers, they practically don't have unemployment. So they are careers which uh, you can uh, for sure uh, find uh, a job. And uh, also the jobs that are created in this new uh, economy, uh, they are usually uh, much more paid. The salaries are higher, which means that if we cannot make uh, women massively come into this uh, digital revolution, uh, that will increase in the near future uh, uh, inequality between men and women, and we, want, we don't want that. So uh, just for also for the purpose of uh, uh, equality in terms of gender, we need to boost uh, policies, we need to boost uh, our programs to encourage more women into ICT uh, now and in the near, in the near future. Um, so what are we doing uh, in that sense? Uh, what can we do? Obviously, uh, governments uh, have the first uh, responsibility. Uh, the government of Catalonia, we are taking action in that issue with various, various initiatives. Um, one of them, for example, uh, two years ago, we started to uh, a, uh, a um, ICT woman prizes for recognizing uh, successful women in Catalonia in the area of ICT. Because we believe that uh, to have uh, women which are referent in this area can be very helpful for other women uh, in order to, uh, whenever they have to take the decision, in uh, going into this type of careers. So recognizing the work, uh, recognizing the talent, recognizing uh, all these aspects in terms of ICT of those uh, successful women in Catalonia 
has been uh, one of the um, uh, issues which we have done uh, as a government uh, over the past uh, years. Obviously, reinforcing in, in the uh, first years of education the idea that um, this type of um, subjects like maths, ICT, engineering, uh, the, um, the way we teach them at schools so that more women, more girls uh, uh, encourage in taking uh, a free decision to study this type of subjects is also something which we have started to work in because obviously we need to start from from very from very beginning. Um, to end, just let me say that, uh, but governments can do a lot of things, but I truly believe that the best the best policy for promoting uh, women in ICT is you. And just let me challenge let me challenge you on that issue. You are the best policy uh, for promoting ICT in, in women. Because you can uh, be a reference for them, your good work can be a reference for more women. You can uh, also uh, encourage more girls to in, in doing so. So uh, you also have a responsibility uh, in helping uh, ICT, in helping our society, in having uh, more women in this in this area and uh, just let me say uh, you probably know the first uh, computer scientist the first computer scientist uh, was a woman she was called uh, Ada Lovelace uh, let's hope uh, in the near future uh, there will be more Ada Lovelace uh, in, in our society because that will mean that uh, we will have more women helping us uh, changing the world in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Jordi. So that's the end of the opening ceremony. Welcome again to the UPC and to Catalonia and enjoy your stay. Thank you to the panel for a fantastically inspirational introduction to the day. Um, I am absolutely delighted to introduce my dear friend Alison Kennedy for our next talk. Alison and I met in 2011 when I was a very naive ex-PhD student. I just finished my PhD and I started working at Edinburgh Parallel Computing Centre where Alison at that time was the Executive Director of Operations. I have to say, Alison was the most inspirational executive director you could ever imagine. I didn't even know for a few months that she was in charge. I've never told you that before. <laughs> because she was just so down to earth. And just following on from this morning's panel, if there's one thing that you could do going away from here, it's to be that inspiration. And don't be scary, because the most inspiring people, such as Alison to me, are the ones that aren't scary and intimidating. So go out and be a friend to those women coming through who just need that little bit of encouragement that we all need to get going sometimes. So without further ado, Alison Kennedy from the Hartree Center where she's a director will be talking about supercomputing, my personal favorite topic, dispelling the myth of boy jobs and girl jobs. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tony, and thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I'm really pleased to be here um, and to be able to talk to you. So supercomputing is one of these areas of IT where it, it has this reputation for being really difficult, really technical. Um, but we are here to dispel that, and, and I want to share some of the insights with you um, that I've developed over the years and, and try to convince you that it is a field um, that you should be interested in working in. So I got my idea for the title um, from something our new prime minister said. So 
For those of you who don't follow UK politics, Theresa May is only the second woman prime minister that the UK has had. So first one for 25 years, big excitement, oh, we have a woman in charge. The very first interview she gives when she gets the traditional questions about, oh, you're a woman, how do you manage to balance home life and work life? She comes out and talks about boy jobs and girl jobs and how in her family they split things. So, you know, her husband takes out the rubbish and she organizes the household stuff. And this, of course, created a huge storm in the UK um, under you know, every, everyday sexism about how things in the UK were never going to change. Although we had women in different positions, if they persisted in telling the media that everything was exactly the same at home and that you know, they were still women doing women's jobs, then that wasn't really going to take us forward. So, so one of the other things um, that I'm trying to tackle in my day-to-day -day job is supercomputing as systems get bigger and bigger are getting more and more complex to program and to produce projects. So instead of hiring experts um, who know everything about a particular area, what we need to be able to do is to build teams of people who work very closely together. Now women are obviously, um, tend to be better at working in teams. We've, we've already heard how diversity is important. But one of the things I'm really keen to stop in teams is having women's roles and men's roles. That somebody thinks, oh, men are better at this, women are better at that. So if we to have integrated teams, how do we do it in a sensible way so that everybody has an equal opportunity to choose the sorts of roles that they would like and not have it forced on them by cultural perceptions? So a little bit about me. I think like most, most women of my age in tech, um, I'm not conventional. So my undergraduate degree is in history. So I came into IT an indirect route. Um, I managed to talk myself into a job in systems programming by convincing the recruiters that languages and computer languages were exactly the same. If you could do one, you could do the other. And nobody knew enough to contradict me. Um, it's not quite true, but uh, it's more or less true. Um, I worked through a number of roles in industry. Um, I then went to work in academia in high performance computing, quite by accident, but I don't really have time to go into that today. So, so now I'm the director of a national lab in the UK, which is particularly looking at working with industry, um, using high performance computing and high performance data analytics. So it's working at the forefront. Um, we're beginning to increase the number of women working there, but unsurprisingly, we work with big industry and there's no women who are in charge of computing in the UK in big industry as far as I can see. So although we can increase our diversity, it really needs to be across the whole of the, of the UK. So whether you're working in academia, in industry, um, it's important for you to get on in your careers and help to change attitudes. So I was going to do a very quick introduction to supercomputing because I know everybody here won't necessarily know about it. Um, so, so, like many other areas of computing, supercomputing came about because there are things that we'd like to test out that we can't necessarily do um, through experiment or theory. So it's things like, um, if it's things like um, global warming, where perhaps the timescales are so long that you can't just sit back and wait and see what's going to happen. Investigating things like, like very small atoms and molecules and things like fusion. Um, so in order to tackle some of these challenges, we've been working on big designing larger and larger supercomputers. So the sorts, supercomputers, obviously, as I say, are getting bigger. The definition of a supercomputer is changing every year, but typically it's a computer with a significantly higher level of computational performance than a general purpose computer. And this is generally measured in floating point operations per second. So, so the, the aim of a lot of the research now is to develop an exaflop computer. So this is, a, this is a pipe dream. The biggest ones we have at the moment are about 100, 100 I think it's about 130 petaflops. Um, so along with Barcelona Supercomputing Center, my center is a partner in a project which has just been funded by the EC, and we are trying to develop a prototype that's uh, about 400 pet, petaflops. important, why is IT increasingly important and why do we need really good programmers? Well, in order for, for supercomputing to work, um, we have to be able to take our problems and split them into 
different parts that can be run on different processors on these really big computers.